Let's sketch the graph of z equals x squared minus y squared. And maybe we recognize which quadric surface this is. Maybe we just have memorized all of the formats of them. Maybe we looked in the textbook, but I wanna approach this like I'm not sure what this graph is going to be. So I want to examine slices of it. And the first slice I wanna think about is what happens in the x, z plane, or where y is equal to zero. Well, when y is equal to zero, this equation becomes z equals x squared. Well, in the xz plane, that's simply a parabola that faces up and goes through the origin. And so I'm not going to worry with scale right now. I'm just going to kind of sketch in what's going on. And in the xz plane, I get this parabola that we're really used to, right? In the xy plane, we're used to y equals x squared. Well, this looks just like that, just in the xz plane, treating x as the input and z as the output. All right, the next slice I want to consider is what's going on in the yz plane, or where x is equal to zero. Well, our equation when x is equal to zero is just minus y squared. Well, that's another parabola. It's just that this one is in the yz plane and faces downward, still passing through the origin. All right, and that didn't turn out so well on the other side, but we just have that parabola facing downwards here. All right, well, while we're letting x equal some things, let's imagine that x is equal to 1 and see what happens to our equation. We get z equals 1 minus y squared. I get that same parabola shifted up one unit, but not in the yz plane anymore. We're parallel to the yz plane at x equals 1. All right, so x equals 1 is a plane that will come through here. And so I draw a parabola that looks pretty much like that one, just one unit higher. Okay, well, that was positive 1. Let's think about minus 1. That would be a slice on the other side of the yz plane, but I'd get exactly the same statement when I square that minus 1. Well, I think I'm starting to kind of catch on what's going on. Let's imagine that x is plus or minus 2. No matter which one, we get z equals 4 minus y squared. Well, when x is positive 2, I get that parabola that's even further up. And at x equals minus 2, I get that same parabola. All right, and I think I'm starting to understand what shape this is. But now let's go back. And think about letting y equal, well, plus or minus 1. If y is equal to plus or minus 1, I get x squared minus 1. So I get a parabola where y is plus or minus 1. All right, so plus 1 here. I get a parabola that looks like it's been shifted down from that first red parabola I drew. On the other side, I'd get the same thing. I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time drawing on that side, so I'm just going to keep it on this side. Let's think about y equals plus or minus 2. All right, well, then z would equal x squared minus 4. And I'd get a parabola in the plane where y equals 2, just sketched a little further downwards. All right, and I, th I understand what we're getting here, right? And I should have parabolas on the other side doing the same thing, and those are real hard to draw. So we'll pretend that went well. This is a hyperbolic paraboloid. It's one of these, right? I have my parabola that's facing up, this red one. The purple parabola that's facing down, they're here. It's here. And then further up and further up, when x was equal to plus or minus 1, when y is equal to plus or minus 1, that's these parabolas that still trace up and down. Okay, well, we put slices together where x is equal to something, where y is equal to something, and we keep getting parabolas. Let's look at and see what happens when z is equal to, say, plus or minus 1. All right, let's start with z equals 1, though, and then z equals minus 1. All right, plugging in z equals 1, I get 1 equals x squared minus y squared. Plugging in z equals minus 1, 
Well, I'd get minus one equals x squared minus y squared, so I could imagine flopping the signs around and getting one equals y squared minus x squared. These are equations of hyperbola. One hyperbola, this one, that would have a horizontal transverse axis if I was looking at the xy plane, is right here. A branch here and a branch there. This hyperbola that came from z equals minus one is below the xy plane here. And then its other branches on this other side where I keep having a hard time drawing. But on my model, the first hyperbola I drew is here, right? A slice that's above where the origin would be. The second one facing the other way, right? The conjugate hyperbola, right? With vertical transverse, with a vertical transverse axis. As I go further down, I get another hyperbola, just lower, and then the same thing here is my planes keep being higher. If z was equal to two, I'd get a hyperbola here and here, thus the name, the hyperbolic paraboloid. I like thinking about this as what we get when we look at a Pringles potato chip. There's one more slice I wanna talk about though. At z equals zero. Putting in a zero for z gives me x squared minus y squared equals zero, or x squared equals y squared. Taking the square root of both sides gives taking the square root of both sides gives me y equals plus or minus x, which would just be a pair of lines crossing at the origin. And if I look at this 3D printed model, I can actually see in the printing that x shape there, which coincidentally is excuse me, which coincidentally those lines are the asymptotes for each one of these hyperbolas we get letting z equal um, any constant other than zero. So there's my hyperbolic paraboloid drawn somewhat successfully, but here fairly well done. Below this video, you'll see a link to GeoGebra.